I love growing clematis. Now, clematis is called the queen of the vines, and here in the Pacific Northwest, they grow extremely well. This is a silver moon clematis, and it's growing up over an ivy-covered gazebo, but you don't need a lattice to grow a clematis or even a large structure like this. Today what I want to tell you is some clematis growing tips, how to keep your clematis blooming all summer, how to plant a clematis, but my favorite thing of all is how to grow a clematis without a lattice. Let's go see my very favorite clematis that I waited seven years to garden with. Come on. Okay, now here is my favorite clematis because it's my most recently planted clematis, but it's called Seboldii. Now look at these blooms. They look like they're double flowering. This vine was planted only three months ago. This is going to stay in bloom for many, many months because of the secret. And the secret is do not fertilize your clematis when it is in bud or in bloom. If you fertilize the clematis when it's in flower, you force the flowers to very quickly drop their petals and you have a slower bloom time. The other secret is keeping the roots cool because clematis like their tops in the sun, which is why they're so great for growing up roses, for growing up flowering shrubs, but they like the roots to be cool. Now when I first planted this clematis, the boldii, I put these two rocks on top of the roots. I'm removing them now because in the spring, the rocks are great. They kind of warm the soil and they keep me from digging right where I planted. But now that it's warm and it's in the summer, I'm going to use this compost. And I like to use compost from a local company. This one is um, Cascade Compost. And I put this right on top of the roots of the clematis because compost, nice black compost, keeps the roots cool. So let me show you exactly how to plant a clematis about a foot away from a shrub so you too can enjoy the beauty of a clematis without a lattice. Okay, now we're about to enter my hydrangea room. Now this is kind of an area that is screened off by a pyramidalis hedge, but notice this clematis. This is a very well-known clematis and this is Jackamani clematis and it comes back year after year. It really decorates this evergreen but ever boring hedge and then it also blooms in front of the variegated foliage of the Pieris japonica. I love when you just drape clematis through your trees and shrubs. It's kind of like adding jewelry to your garden the way that it decorates and just comes back every year and I rarely prune this clematis because I want it to be big and bold and just fooling itself all about the hedge. But come on into the hydrangea room where I'm going to add even more, hydra more clematis to climb up a hydrangea. Okay, I'm going to be planting this little blue clematis. It has bell-shaped blooms and it doesn't get quite as tall as like the Jackamani or the Nelly Mosier clematis. All you have to do, you don't have to remember all these fancy names, read the tag. Look for a clematis that they say grows six to eight feet. That's more of a dwarf variety, so it's not going to really overpower the hydrangeas in this room. The great thing about planting a clematis um, along with hydrangeas is they both like the cool moist soil and the slow release plant food. So I've gathered together my supplies that you need for planting a clematis and you need some compost. You need the osmocote because remember clematis and hydrangeas both appreciate a slow release plant food like osmocote and a watering can because here's the planting tip. First of all when you dig a hole the width of the container dig your hole three times as wide. So this is about eight inches wide, 24 inches wide is how big I want this hole. And the reason is, is because clematis do best when they have a nice big root ball. And the clematis is not going to spread out unless it has nice soft soil. So dig a big hole and now, here's a great tip, before I even think about adding the plant, I'm going to add water to this planting hole. The reason is because the clematis roots will only stay where the soil is moist. Because I'm planting in the summertime and the soil's a little bit dry, I'm watering in some water first. Then I add the compost. Now the compost will help hold the water, but I'm not going to just have the compost in the bottom of the planting hole. I'm actually going to mix the compost into all the surrounding soil so that 
the roots will be encouraged to really, really spread out. Now, the Osmocote. Now, remember I told you the secret of clematis, if you fertilize when they're in bloom, they don't like that fast-acting liquid fertilizer. They much prefer a slow-release plant food. So Osmocote comes with this really cool top. I can fill a whole capful. And that's about enough for a gallon-sized clematis. Sprinkle that all into the soil. And now, a lot of time when you buy a clematis, it's going to have a support, a stick stapled to the back. I already loosened the staple with a screwdriver so that the plant whoa, can just slide right out. But I'm going to leave it on the, I'm going to keep this post. Now there's the roots. I loosen up these roots. And I'm going to use this wooden post so that it can kind of help guide the clematis all the way to the hydrangea. One more very special point about clematis. Clematis is one of the few plants, tomato is another one, that you can plant deeper than it was originally grown. It's because it will make more roots all along. There you go. And then I'm going to go ahead and put more of this compost on top to keep the roots nice and cool. I figure when you're going to add a compost mulch, um, you know, you want to figure maybe two to three inches of mulch. Here's a root sticking out. Cut that out. And now, I have a clematis that probably will be spectacular in two to three years. Now, notice I fertilized at planting time, and I will also fertilize. Uh, early in the spring. Around April, I'll come in here and I'll sprinkle the osmocote around all the hydrangeas, all the clematis, and then by summer, you're going to have this explosion of blooms. So remember, hydrangeas are great for supporting clematis, but also in my garden, you're going to see clematis little duckling. Little duckling is a dwarf clematis, and I have that growing on a, a white hydrangea. I also have clematis growing on a, a white lattice. So, Enjoy the different clematis blooming in my garden and be inspired to grow more clematis in yours.